Alright, how's it going guys? A little bit late to this game. Turn 4, so nothing too crazy that we've missed. Uh, let's just really quickly go over it. We've got the Weezing lead versus the Healy list. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, we're gonna Volt Switch, turn 1. Uh, we don't- I don't know any of these sets, so this is gonna be a surprise to me. As much of a surprise to me as it is to you, if you are watching us. Um, so we don't know if it's U-Turn plus Volt Switch. Um, we get the U-Turn there into that, and we've got some uh, Volt Switch- um, Volt Turn momentum going on right here. He's actually able to catch the extra with the Surf, which is really, really nice. Gets a big, big chunk of damage off onto it. Uh, looks like it's potentially going to be a Scarf Drill, especially if he makes that play, especially if he stays in, the, in on that um, on that turn right there. So it's definitely looking to be a Scarf Extra Drill. Heal this could be a lot of things. It could be- I feel like Specs would do a lot more, but I guess we- I'm not really sure. It could just be a Expert Belt set. It could be a lot of interesting things, but we do see the Leafeon come in right here. Leftovers Leafeon, looking to be pretty good. It's going to be a pretty solid answer to the Expert Drill set, if it's a much more defensive set, much more bulky set. And we see the Baton Pass on this turn, so that's really nice. Catches the Weezing, uh, gets a lot of momentum right there. Really nice. Uh, he's able to pretty much bring in the Heliosk here again, I would assume. Heliosk is a good switch in. Uh, Blastoise could be a potential switch in. Gets, keeps Toxic Spikes off the field able to fire off Scalds and stuff. It is the Helios that comes in. Every time Helios comes in, it has to make the decision what move it really wants to go for. Hyper Voice is fairly decent, but I feel like Volt Switch is the better play overall because he does have that Porygon that he is most likely going to go into. I don't know if you really want to risk going into Extra Drill again after just taking 50%, so I feel like in this situation, Volt Switch is fairly safe. He might even just stay in with Weezing, throw off a will o -Wisp, something like that, which would be a little bit annoying, and I feel like Weezing is pretty critical in ch uh, beating a lot of things. Weezing beats almost everything on his, uh, his opponent's side of the field. Beats down, we uh, beats down. Uh, excuse me, um, Scizor and stuff. Uh, anyways, sorry, I was gonna say beats down Scissor, beats down Leafy, beats down Clefable, beats down potentially the Sliking. Um, so interesting stuff there. We do see the Toxic Spike going up, which is actually going to be very annoying. There's no uh, the the only kind of removal that we're gonna be looking at is the Scissor or the Blastoise. Blastoise obviously going to have to take the Poison on entry, and Scissor going to be kind of annoyed by having to de having to defog. But I mean, I guess it's something we can see. It's not going to be able to defog on the Weezing, which is the big thing right here. It's not going to be able to defog on the Weezing. Getting Leafy on poisoned is something that I don't really want to happen for him. Clefable obviously isn't really going to matter. Fires off Thunderbolt t t uh, for two moves in a row, which is pretty cool. Uh, interesting because, like we said, he does have the Porygon in the back, so interesting plays right here. I'm not so sure again about letting the Weezing get weakened. The Weezing is now below 50%, so I think overall Bash is kind of coming out on top of this exchange a little bit. Uh, he does always have to worry about the uh, drill or the Porygon switching in. We'll see if he does. He does not catch the Porygon switching in. So it's down to 60%, but this is going to have a very easy time healing up right here. Um, if he has Volt Switch, if he's, um, I was going to say if he's locked into that move, then we won't see the Volt Switch. So the fact that he just hard switches leads me to believe that he is definitely a leads me to believe that he's definitely like locked into that. Um, so interesting stuff right there, we do see the Scissor coming in and we do see the Paralysis, which is nice because that means Scissor doesn't have to fuck around with getting burned by Weezing, so that's pretty cool. But the Weezing, of course, could still have some like Flamethrower or Fire Blast, anything like that in the back, so it still doesn't mean that the Scissor is a solid answer to that yeah, by any means of the word. We could see a Default coming out, it's leftover set. It makes me a little bit more inclined to believe that it could definitely be a defog set. We could see a Swords Dance coming out. A Swords Dance use turn is interesting. I guess it keeps up momentum. Um, I'm not really sure what we'll see right here. Again, Swords Dance is a fairly decent option. We'll see if that's what he wants to go for. It is just the defog, so that's interesting. Getting the recover on that turn is pretty nice. Like, he did risk the knockoff. Uh, he definitely risked the knockoff. Knockoff is kind of drawback free um, against his team anyways. So that, that was a pretty big... Pretty big turn that could have been a pretty big annoyance to him if he went for the knockoff into the U into the uh, defog the next turn, but he just prioritizes the defog, which I can respect. Keeping the defog off for a lot of these Pokemon, he's free to go for the U turn this turn. Uh, this Porygon is actually going to be a really annoying Pokemon for him to uh, have to deal with. Like uh, maybe Clefable can start setting up on it. Maybe. Um, he can get Toxic on it with something like Blastoise, but we'll have to see what's going to happen. Likely just a U-turn or knockoff this turn. Uh, unfortunately, it's actually going to be neither because he gets paralyzed that turn. Nothing too crazy. 18% uh, taken away uh, from the 6%, obviously, because of leftovers. Um, and we do see the knockoff, so I mean, this is definitely working out much better for Bash. We get the knockoff. He has an opportunity to roost with the Scizor, so not a huge fan of that. Not a huge fan of that. Uh, uh, the Porygon's... Um, survivability has been greatly hindered. It's going to be a lot less... Uh, it's going to switch into Heliosk a lot 
less easily, I suppose you could say. Plus, at any given point in time, the Scizor is pretty free to go straight for a U-turn, and nothing really particularly likes coming into that U-turn because anything he goes into is going to be giving something a lot of initiative. If he, if he U-turns on something like the Weezing, that's definitely going to be giving the Helios Claw initiative. Um, we don't see the Roost, so Scissor is low. That's pretty critical for something potentially the extra drill. Potentially the pr primarily, I'd say the extra drill. That's I think the biggest part. We see Big Boy Slacking is now in on the field, so something's probably going to drop right here. Uh, I would assume it's the Porygon. Porygon's down to 45%, and that means it's not really the solid. It's not really the most solid switch into the Healy list. So if he wants to sack the Porygon, it means he's going to be committing more so to making the correct plays around the Healy list because <clears throat> he's no longer able to bring extra drill in to a surf. So. If we see the Porygon go down, it means he's agreeing to take this Gambit, rather, where he's agreeing to play around the Electro-type and the moves he goes for. So it's kind of a Gambit. We'll have to see if that's what he wants to go for. Again, this is a Pokemon that can live Thunderbolt. Well, let's uh, really quickly retrace our steps to see how much it did. Thunderbolt's going to be doing 22%, so it's going to be doing significantly more, but it's not going to be doing enough that this Porygon is useless. So again, we'll see if he wants to accept this Gambit right here. We'll see if he wants to save his Porygon. We'll see if he wants to sack it off. Uh, we'll see really what he wants to sack off. Weezing could be a potential sack off. Uh, it wouldn't even be a sack, I don't think, unless he goes for something like a Retaliate. No, it wouldn't be Retaliate. What am I saying? Nothing died. Um, so it is going to be the Porygon that goes down, so he has to play around very carefully with the Helios. Now, Helios is now a very big threat. Um, accepting this as well is a very interesting thing because it gives something setup opportunity. So Reuniclus can come in, Reuniclus can potentially go for a Calm Mind or something like that. Reuniclus should easily be able to live a return the turn after if he wants to Calm Mind here. And then, uh, as it's obviously Truant, and then he can um, recover as he goes for the return. Should be able to take that. There's no way it's going to be old coin, so we could see the Calm Mind right here. That's exactly what we see. Scissor's down to 52%, <clears throat> so we'll have to see how this turns out. It is going to be slower than the Arunaclist, so if you speed creeping the Arunaclist, that is all EV is gone to waste because he's going to be slower with that process. Uh, he can't get burned, which is kind of cool. So we saw right there the HP Fire taking that out. Really nice there. Calm my HP Fire, Psychic Move, and Recover are the moves I'm under the assumption he has. So we'll have to see how he wants to deal with this. Something maybe like a Leafeon, if it's a more offensive set, could go for something like Xs or a knockoff. Uh, Excessor might be a little bit better in terms of prep because it could be something like Culperberry. So we'll have to see how he wants to deal with it because he could, like I said, you definitely go for Leafeon, go for an attack, and then follow it up with uh, something like the Slaking like there. But because of the uh, because of the Slaking situation right there, he's actually looking to be in a pretty good situation with his Reuniclus. Plus one Reuniclus, uh, plus one, plus one, obviously, special uh, with the Calm Mind. Calm Mind and Reuniclus is looking to be in a pretty good situation right here. Now it can take on the Helios. Now it can take on all these Pokemon. Now it can even start outpacing a Calm Mind Clefable because Psy Shock is obviously going to be outpacing that very, very quickly, and we've already got those boosts. Um, obviously, it could be an unaware. That would be an interesting set. Unaware, calm mind. Uh, we'll definitely have to see if that's what he has. That would be a very interesting uh, turn of events. Um, but we'll have to see what's going to happen. Again, he is going to have a hard time kind of breaking through this, especially with the boosts. He can't really talk to you with the Blastoise. That's not going to be enough. Uh, if it's Mega Blastoise, then it could be something like the Dark Pulse. Uh, but. Uh, the fact that he went right out into the slacking means, I guess, he's a little bit more confident in dealing with the, with the slacking. So we'll have to see. I don't think Retaliate even kills the Reuniclus. Um, Shadow Clock crit, maybe? I don't know. We'll have to see what he wants to go for. I feel like this is such a easy win condition that even though the slacking doesn't really seem like that big of a threat, you do kind of want to scout things. You do kind of want to keep things, for, keep things protected. Maybe sack off the... I mean, Weezing still has a lot of value, so maybe... I would try to scout, try to sack something off just to uh, guarantee, just to ensure that the Ruthless does have a easy time winning the game. Uh, we do see the disconnect. He's definitely going to be coming back very soon. But the interesting thing here is that you could sack off a Pokemon. If he goes for a move like Return, then you can do just like you did last turn, come right back in, go for another Calm Mind, uh, because he's definitely going to be forced out to switch. However, if he goes for some interesting tech, maybe some um, Ghostium uh, Never Ending Nightmare Shadow Claw. Uh, maybe uh, even a uh, what am I trying to say? Maybe even, even a dark hole, a black hole eclipse. If he has uh, access to a good move that can make use of that, um, it scouts for that. Scouts for a powerful Z move. I don't know if Z move would have killed. I, I don't know if non banded would have killed the Porygon the earlier turn. Let's just go back to it and see how much we did. 
it was 45%, so I mean, it was non violite and it was most likely especially defensive Porygon, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that it is not a Bandit Slacking. So, again, we'll have to see what he's going to go for right here. He has an opportunity to fire something off, and uh, the Gotham Nightmares has an opportunity right here to see how he wants to react to it. So, uh, like I said, it's all about reacting, it's all about seeing what he wants to do, and we see the Giga Impact, so losing the Arena Quiz is a huge turn right here. Arena Quiz had a lot of potential to win the game, stole the game by himself. So, that was a pretty big turn, I'm not sure how much I agree with that, because like I said in the back, at the end of the day, Arena Quiz always had a lot of potential. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, every time, if he, being, given the fact that he has the Giga Impact, every time, you would have to either switch to the Arena Quiz anyways, so, um, I mean, to be fair, if you have other setup moves, other setup mods, you do have the opportunity to take advantage of it. We are going to see it take the high jump kick, and we are, do know that that is faster. So is that a Scarf Giga Impact? Oh my goodness. Interesting stuff there. That's crazy. I mean, it doesn't even have to be Scarf, but it just, it if it was Scarf Slaking, that would negate Scarf Blazekin, which would kind of have left me inclined to believe that he, that's what he went to do. Or no, it was Sash in that minute. Okay, that's okay. Sash Agility! Okay, I like this. So he's free to actually go for a Swords Dance if he has it this turn. Very cool stuff. I don't know why he didn't just uh, set up on that first turn with the Giga Impact. I guess, no, I guess that's fair. Uh, if he's Dual Dance, then I think he should have gone for the Swords, gone for the setup at the very beginning, but... Yeah, it looks like he's not dual dance. I was going to say if he's dual dance, he should have gone for it, but uh, I, I, I can respect that play because he thought he was going to take it out. All right, guys, sorry about this. I kind of got interrupted while I was uh, while I was recording the previous portion of this video. I thought I still wanted to actually upload this because I thought the kind of initial recording that I did was kind of cool, had a lot of fun things. Yeah, we got some hot slacking action going on, so I kind of wanted to keep it, and um, obviously, like I said, I wasn't able to record uh, very much of the video after this point, so I want to go through it with a just going over the recordings, kind of talking over stuff that happened, and uh, finish up with there. Um, I, I this happens a lot of times when I try to record stuff. It, it seems like uh, I, I, I try to record, and then I get kind of interrupted in the middle of it, and then I just kind of try to kind of scrap the video overall. But anyway, like I said with this one, I did want to kind of save it. So <clears throat> that being said, let's kind of move on to what happens. Uh, last we saw, the Blazekin was at plus two. Plus two speed versus uh, versus that Pokemon right here. We see the protect uh, as he goes for a blaze kick, and whatever you see for attack on Fable, that always makes you inclined to believe that it is an unaware set, not a magic guard set. So that being said, he's actually going to save his blaze kick by going up to the Manaphy, which is kind of cool. Gets a special attack drop, which doesn't really matter because he actually goes for the toxic. It would have been annoying if he kind of switched on that turn, but he does just go for the toxic, which is nice. Uh, he throws off the wish, and this is now confirmed uh, not unaware, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's also kind of cool, obviously, because he brought it in versus the blaze kick on that turn. That being said, that's a free wish pass into uh, the healing list, which we'll see right here uh, as he doubles out into the Weezing. Now, Weezing after leftovers and all that stuff can for sure take the Thunderbolt uh, as he does right there, which is nice because he can throw off the moment, the memento and going into the extra. This is, of course, the Pokemon that uh, the Gotham Knight wears is going to try to win the game with. Now, <clears throat> a few things to talk about. Obviously, the extra drill is faster than everything except this Heliolisk. And obviously, we saw in the earlier game that the Surf did 50%, clean 50% to the extra drill, which makes this actually a roll to kill the extra drill, which is never something you want to bank your game off of. So, what Bash is going to want to be doing is get... 3%, 4%, a little bit around that range of damage, at the very least, uh, onto the extra. Obviously, any more damage is welcome, but he needs to get a little bit of troop damage onto this extra so that he can guaranteed get rid of this Pokemon with Surf. So, like I said, this is a threatening Pokemon. Um, staying in is not the play. Uh, even if you're predicting a Sword Dance, staying in is definitely not the play. So, he is going to switch out as he is going to go for the Sword Dance into the Leafeon. Now, this is definitely a threat. This is the most likely Z move user as well. So, that's kind of a thing. So, he does go for the Protect, try to bait out that Z move. But he's not going to bait out the Z move. He's just going to go for the Iron Head. So, he's free to fire off a. Um, he uh, The uh, extra is actually free to fire off the. Uh, if, if it was Z uh, Iron Head, he would have gone for it right there. But anyways, we see really, really unfortunate turn right here. We see the crit flinch, which is really, really unfortunate. He goes for a protect, uh, but it's not going to save him. He's going to be following up with another iron. So really, really unfortunate that he got the crit flinch right there because that is going to take out the Leafeon, and the Leafeon obviously would have put him in range of the attack. Now, Bash goes right here into the Heliosk, and I don't really agree with this play. Uh, you'll see at the end of the day, it doesn't. It kind of doesn't really matter, but he actually goes into Heliosk here, banking on the roll. I think that was 100% not the right play, because, I don't know, I, I obviously, if he went into Blastoise first, and then he got the hit off with the Blastoise, it would have been uh, a much different, uh, much different, because 
like like we'll see right here he goes for the surf and it's does not it's not able to kill him out leaves him on three percent so i think he should have gone into blastoise first uh we go he goes into blastoise right now but he actually gets crit with the blastoise so that's a really really unfortunate uh, bash was under the impression that he could have won with blastoise at that point anyways if he didn't get crit i'm not the hugest fan of that uh it was a cursed rust talk set and stuff but after earthquake he would have been put in range for sure of anything Blaze can do. Can do. Uh, Blaze can sure he has a physically defensive unaware Clefable, but Clefable is poisoned. So I don't know. Putting yourself in that situation is a very risky situation to put yourself into, where you're going off the Blastoise win as opposed to the Heliolus win. It didn't matter at the end of the day because he did get crit with the Blastoise, and obviously the Clefable is just going to go down to the Iron Head. So really, really unfortunate. If he didn't get crit with the Blastoise and crit on Leafeon, he would have been able to win the game. So really, really unfortunate there. It was a uh, fun game to watch up until the turn uh, that we saw the extra come out. Up until turn uh, 26, I guess, uh, technically, I guess up until um, this turn right here, we get uh, crit and flinch. Up until turn 29, it was a very solid battle. Uh, I had a lot of fun watching it, and I'm assuming they had a lot of fun playing because it was definitely a very unique battle. But uh, at this turn, it was uh, after turn 29. It was a it was a really uh, unfortunate battle to be a part of. I would assume as well as to kind of to spectate. But that was the game, and um, yeah, Bash. I can definitely assume is very very salty over that. Uh, but yeah, that was the game, and I guess I'll see you guys uh, next time.